Well, let's pray. Lord, we just thank you today for this atmosphere of worship. We thank you for the anointing, the word of the Lord, that have, the word of the Lord has been already going forth. And we just thank you, Lord, that you're not done. This is this is just another session in this conference. And so we ask you, Lord, to speak for your servants are listening. We open up our ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say to us in this moment. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we grew up we grew up in a prophetic house. And um, you know, we we were in a place where Probably there was probably about forty or fifty people that could do what we're doing here. Um, it was a pr- it was an unusual environment that uh, we grew up in, and you know this this what God's doing in this hour, not just in the prophetic ministry. This conference is a prophetic conference, but God's calling the fivefold ministry to do something different than ever before, and that is this is, you know, what's, what's the fivefold ministry? Put up your hand. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist. The evangelist, you see of all the fingers, goes the furthest. The evangelist goes out, and then the pastor, in your, in your left hand, your ring finger, there's a vein that goes to the heart, the pastor, the heart of the, the, heart of the pastor, and then the teacher. And so in this hour, like, what we're, we're, this is a prophetic conference. So this, this is the, the, the pointing conference, God speaking specifically to people. But the fivefold ministry, the original intention, it was a gift that God gave to the church, and the original intention was to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. And somewhere along the line, things got flipped, and all of a sudden, it became a show, and it became entertainment, and everyone, you know, wanted to have all the titles and you weren't a success in the kingdom if you didn't have a microphone, a title, and weren't on a stage and under the lights. And that's just a bunch of foolishness. And we have to be able to discern what we're supposed to do, equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. My dad got a, had a business card given to him one time at a pastor's conference. And uh, the guy told my dad, he says, I'm an apostle, a prophet, and an evangelist. I walk in all three offices. And I'm sitting here going, I don't know too many people who m- walk in more than one as a primary, and then some people have secondary things. But he said, I'm an apostle, a prophet, and evangelist. And he had the acronym for apostle, prophet, and evangelist ministries on his business card that he had in my father. So you can just do the math on their apostle, prophet, evangelist, acronym, ministries. APE. And my dad, he just looked and he said, this is about what it is. This is about what we're talking about. Cause, but when we properly discern who we're supposed to be and what we're called to do, it's not about the stage ministry. It's, it's, it's not about fame and fortune and finances and all that stuff. That's, not, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, go, go ahead. I just wanted to say that um, <clears throat> most people get that really wrong because the fivefold ministry is there to serve the people, to equip the people to do the work of the ministry. And what's happened is the ministry has become, we're equipping you to serve us. Woo. That's wrong. Number two, if we were living in the times of the original times of the Bible, book of Acts, you, uh, you weren't running to be called an apostle because you were hunted to be killed. You weren't standing on line with a badge. I'm a, what did you say, AP, APE? <laughs> APE, come and kill me. No, you wouldn't, it wouldn't have been that way because the, the scripture Paul says very clearly that the church is founded upon, of course, Jesus Christ and the foundation of the uh, the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus is the chief cornerstone. So the apostles and prophets are not up here. They're on the bottom. They're the ones that go down the lowest, and he builds upon them. They're not up here. The hierarchy is upside down. And this is the problem that we have. 
Absolutely. And so the it has to become our passion to equip the saints. That's why it's so exciting for me as a pastor. And then also I move in prophetic ministry out there a lot. And it's so exciting for me to to watch people receive a word from the Lord. Because yeah. first of all, the first thing that comes over you, it's like God's speaking to me. And there's this overwhelming sense of the presence of God that comes upon you. And then, then you start listening to the details. And if you received a prophetic word during this weekend, we want to meet with you because we don't want to just leave it hanging out there in prophetic land. We believe in what I call prophetic 2.0. And that is we move from the impartation with the information to a place of interpretation so that there can be demonstration. Because I want to see the word of the Lord come to pass in your life. And so for us, we have to partner together. And that's a, it's, a, it's a pastoral, you know, partnership <laughs> that we have with you. And so we'd, I just, there's so many people out there, you guys, with prophetic words. And it's, prof the prophetic speaks to the potential of something and someone, but that is, it's not automatic. There is a thing called prophetic responsibility. And so that means, again, if God speaks a word in a particular area, you need to be possibly qualified or certified in that area. Now, there are different types of words. There are now words. I mean, what they were speaking over, over this business people today was just so powerful because these are things that God's doing, and it's in the works. And they're speaking into those things, and it, there's an acceler. Watch the acceleration take place um, in it. But um, here, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to ask you all a question. Um, so I'm ever looking for definition, fresh definition or clarity uh, for, for things like the prophetic. And, you know, I, you know, one just real simple is the prophetic is verbalizing God's thoughts. Um, and the one I wanted to, and I have several, but the one I wanted to share with you, you guys and just kind of bounce off this is the prophetic is is a, is an utterance, a declaration, a decree of words that are God's delivery system. And I want to I want I want to emphasize that those two words, delivery system, to release the resources of heaven, the wisdom of heaven, the intention of heaven, and the kingdom of heaven into earth for you to accomplish the word. You look at you want you just the delivery system. And, uh, and, and so I want to just kind of ask, let me start with you two, and then we'll come back to, to our uncle here. <laughs> um, what has been your personal experience um, in the prophetic, not, not in prophetic ministry, but just as words have gone over your lives? <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> I think I started yesterday, but, uh, okay. So man, like, like I said, growing up, you know, in, in the church that we grew up, the prophetic was just, um, it was the DNA of our house. Um, our, our pastors were prophets. And so, you know, when you live in that environment, um, it really becomes the anchor um, I would say, I mean, the word is, is, is your anchor, but the prophetic word, the rhema word, the now word, you have the logos, which is the written. But then when God begins to speak over the written word, right, um, for me personally, I, I kind of like set my life upon like, what is God speaking to me now? And so personally, I think I, when, when I would read, my first prophetic word came when I would think I was like 15 years old. We had a youth presbytery. Um, and Pastor Eric actually prophesied over me in that presbytery. And from there, um, you know, I've had many words. And what I would do, because you're talking about my personal experience and how I began to, like, apply the word, I made a compilation of those words. Um, you remember CDs and you can, like, drop the things? And I had, like, a 45-minute CD of all my prophetic words. 
And what I would do is I would listen to them for years. My, my, I think my, my mom is here. Mom, wave your hand. And so she's hit there. And so she know I would have all my tapes and I put them all together. And so for years, from about 15 to maybe 30 years old and beyond, I would listen. I memorized. I know all the prophetic songs. I know all the prophetic declarations. And I would, like, literally memorize the word of the Lord. And begin, because the Bible says that you can wage warfare, right? That's what Paul told Timothy, um, using the words that have been spoken over your life. And so because they literally became ingrained in my mind and in my spirit, I would pray the word. I would, I would uh, pr uh, prophesy the word back to me. And it literally became like a road map to my life. I bought in 100%. The buy-in is so important to your prophetic word. If you just hear the word and then think it's like Pastor Patrick said, it's going to come to pass and you don't have to buy in. But literally I aligned my life to the word of the Lord. One of the first words that Pastor Eric gave me, I believe I was 18. He said, God's going to open a door for you in the education systems. He's got, I, I, this is literally the word because I memorized. He's going to open for door for you in the school system. He's going to open doors for you. There's going to be open doors. So what did I do? Career wise, I aligned myself to working in schools. I aligned myself to work in education. I didn't veer off to other industries because that's what the word of the Lord says. So there has to be a buy-in to what God says. And as you do that, and as you lend yourself, then the doors open and God does what he has to do. So I would say for me personally, and I would share this with you, memorize the word, listen to it over and over and over and over again. Get it deep within your spirit. Pray and align and buy in. You know, I would say for me, I, I, I got my first prophetic word at uh, 19, I think it was 19 years old, and I, I was uh, shaking in my boots because I thought they were going to say something to pull down my, uh, uh, my knickers and, and everybody was going to see my holy underwear and, oh, Lord, what are they going to say, Lord? What are they going to say? And uh, it was such a, a healing restorative word to my life, uh, and it began a journey of discovery. Uh, there was a very unique word that, you know, I, I mean, and, and secretly I wanted them to say that, you know, I, I was, you know, I had a prophetic anointing, and I, I had some things that I wanted them to say, and they gave me a word that was unique that I didn't understand for years, I didn't understand it for years, and I rem it was, ex you know, like Don, I, I wrote down every, every word and rehearsed it, and the word was this, was that you will be a prophetic administrator of the gifts of men. And um, I didn't know what that was. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> you know, I was like, uh, well, uh, you know, what does that mean? And I will tell you this, that that has become the predominant gift that has followed me and exhibited itself throughout every era in, of my life. And it's a unique gift. And when you hear me speak or prophesy, I'm usually putting people in place. God has given me the ability uh, to see where people belong. And, and, you know, I don't know that that that, that sounds like an earth-shattering gift to you, but it go it, it, it is needed, you know. And I, I've uh, so I've seen God do... Things and so I, I tell you to say that to you. I say this: um, God may give you a word that you don't yet understand, that you don't quite understand yet. Put it on the shelf and allow time. Put it on the shelf and allow uh, the situation. Let it let it unfold. And uh, I would say this to you: every syllable of the word that I received has been fulfilled. Every word, every single word, and and uh, it's been a, a guiding light in my life. And, and I'm, I'm just going to say this, this is kind of unique because, you know, as, you know, as Pastor Patrick and, and it has communicated, we were raised in a prophetic house where this was common. This was a, this atmosphere, this 
this movement of the spirit, this type of ministry was a common thing. And for the last 10 years, I've been in uh, serving in a church where this was, un- didn't, people didn't understand this. There was no expression of this. And I, and so for, for about two years, I went through a full-blown identity crisis. You know, how does this thing, this beautiful thing that God has given me, how does it fit in a church where they don't even under, they don't have no clue what this is. God showed me something very unique. He showed me something very unique, and I think this is for business owners and for and for people who work in uh, environments where there's no uh, there's no Christian. It's, it's secular. There's no spiritual element uh, that the prophetic and the giftings of God will work in those environments as well. And so God showed me and allowed me and and uh, twisted my gift to be able to function and flow in an environment that they didn't even understand it. Uh, and allowed it to be a an instrument and a tool to lead and guide. And they say, wow, you sure are insightful. <laughs> you, that's, that's, how did you know that? Uh, and, and, and I would just be moving and flowing, and I begin to discover and understand that what God gives you in the house can be used in every area. It can be used in every relationship. It doesn't have to sound religious-y. It, it got, you know, it can be, you can be in stealth mode and be working for God at Starbucks. What I wanted to say is that um, I received my first words <clears throat> probably the most significant words I've ever received, I've received in prayer. In the beginning of my walk, I didn't go to the church that they went to. I used to visit there all the time. And we met up years later. But God used to talk to me. I would pray and wait. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, mount up with wings as eagles, run not, be weary, walk not faint. And when I would wait, because <clears throat> most people pray and say, okay, Lord, I give you my list and I'm done, I'm out. But he said, wait. And as I waited, I learned to hear him and hear. I think one of the most significant words he ever gave me was when he told me he called me to preach. I wasn't in a presbytery. I was in an attic in a house, single man praying. And I was reading the Bible, Acts chapter 9, when Paul's on his way to Damascus and he says to Jesus, who are you, Lord? He says, I'm Jesus whom you're persecuting. And then he says to Jesus, what do you want me to do? And <clears throat> I said those words and I heard a small voice in here say, and he said it twice. And he waited to see if I was going to respond. And I said, yes, Lord. Now, prophetic words, and I'll, I'll move, move a little bit further into this. I remember receiving a prophetic word. And this is a good little story for you. A prophet came to our church from Arizona. I, I, don't, I don't remember. I've only seen her once. But I was uh, in worship, and so I knew I was going to get a word. You know, I, I was one of the singers like these guys here. and I just knew I was going to get prophesied to. And uh, I wore like a red T-shirt that night, <laughs> sat, in the, sat in the second row. <laughs> and I said, I'm ready. I'm ready. If you're in the second row, I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> it's a good place to sit. <laughs> But this lady prophesied, it was a night service, and she prophesied in the morning and then at night over literally everybody in the church. It's a, a, I mean, everybody. And I was, like, psyched for this word. <clears throat> and <laughs> and at the service ended. And she got up. She had a little elderly lady with her as an intercessor, and 
elderly lady took her Bible, and the lady walked down the steps and started walking past. And I was sitting in the second row, kind of on the end, so you couldn't miss me. I mean, all, all I needed was a Kool-Aid, you know, <laughs> sign like, here I am, you know. And she walked by me. She walked right by me like if, if I was sitting with Pastor Patrick. And she walked by like this. And I'll never forget it because I saw people rejoicing that night. And they were like, I got this word. And they were, you could just see the buzz in the atmosphere. And um, don't feel sorry for me, but my eyes watered up. And I, I knew that was going to say. <laughs> but I, <clears throat> I said, well, I guess I don't need it or I guess I'm not that important. And then I got judgmental. I said, that dude over there got a word? He just got out of jail last week. And he's talking about he's going to be a preacher? And was strutting around the front. I've been here, you know, and I went into this mode in my mind. Quickly, I mean, my mind was spinning. And I said, I've been here faithful. I'm singing and worshiping. I know the anointing's on me. I sing the song of the Lord. I can blow. And, you know. And she passed me like this walked past me and got about this far. And the eyes, you know, the old, you know, remember old Chilly Willy, the the penguin with the tears in his eyes? I was like, Chilly Willy. And she stopped and turned around. She said, you thought the Lord forgot you. She said, but I, he said, but I'll never forget you. In fact, I'm going to put you in a place that's so powerful one day. Men are going to ask you, how did you get there? I'm going to raise you up and put you into the heights of heaven and bring you into visibility like nobody in this place. And I collapsed in the chair crying. And I will never forget that word because I didn't, I didn't grow up in the church. I came from the street or society. And I was a college student, so I didn't grow up in the church, so it was all new to me. The first word I got for, for ministry that was clear was in Florida in a presbytery setting, uh, Bill Hammond's group down there. And the guy prophesied, and he said, you, and I saw the accuracy of the word then, you in the wire flame glasses, i never forget it. He said, the anointing of God's all over you. He said, God's going to raise you up. He said, he's going to give you a people because you served other people. I'm going to have other people serve you one day. And I'm sitting in this room blasted back in 84. That's how far back it goes. But the whole thing that I, I just want to add to this, Pastor Patrick, <clears throat> In each of those situations, is something called atmosphere. God speaks out of the atmosphere. And I believe this atmosphere that's here, we walked in here yesterday morning, and literally I saw the glory cloud of God literally resting upon everybody in this atmosphere. When that atmosphere shows up, God speaks out of that atmosphere, and it's, it's a principle. If you look at the Bible, several times that happens in creation. The cloud of glory comes, and God speaks out of that to recreate everything that's messed up. It says, the earth was without form and void, darkness upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved. It's the atmosphere. That atmosphere comes through brokenness, humility, prayer, intercession, worship. Okay? And when that thing comes, God always speaks revelation out of the atmosphere. You probably don't realize, but something, and I thought about it. Didn't you say there was some 10-day thing you had here before? The, the waiting room. We did 10 days an hour, and people were waiting all over the place, too. Okay. That's so prophetic. It's unbelievable because it was a 10-day wait, waiting period in, in, in the day of Pentecost. When the 50th day came, they had been there about 10 days or something, and God showed up. And then out of, out of that atmosphere came the suddenly, the revelation of the Lord that spoke to them and dropped the gift of tongues upon the baptism of the Holy Spirit actually upon them. And this is why this is so important. And I believe that their 10-day waiting period set the atmosphere long before we came here. You created this by being obedient to the call of that the leader asked you to participate in, which God asked him to orchestrate and initiate. And it's created an atmosphere and almost an open heaven here. You don't, I'm, I'm telling you, you don't see this. I mean, the accuracy of what's going on here is scary. Even our brother that came to talking about the city or the, the new building or, or whatever, the new city, that doesn't happen. It's the atmosphere. Yeah. Okay? And one of the things that we are called to do is guard the atmosphere. Guard the atmosphere by prayer, by intercession, uh, by obedience. 
That's how you maintain the atmosphere. That means this. When God says to do something, you do exactly what he says. Nothing more, nothing less. And it, and it stays. Yes. It stays. That cloud, of course, you know in the scripture, followed the, the, the children of Israel. The pillar of fire by night, the cloud by day. It's the same thing all the way across in the Bible. That thing, and out of it is the creative power of God that flows. That's why miracles can happen. That's why you saw, I went to bed thinking about one step, two step, you step up. I kept thinking about that all night when I laid down last night. How many thought about that? <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my head, man. I said, this is crazy. You, you take one step, I'll take two. And I mean, I, I couldn't get it out of my head. Then this morning I woke up and singing, you know, all throne. And the means is all power. How many have been singing that one in the morning? See, look at this. <laughs> it's the atmosphere that yeah. does that. Yeah. See, because in the atmosphere, okay. it's like rain that saturates us. And we're like open sponges that the Lord just begins to move in, into our openness and marinates us with his glory. That's what happened. That's what's happening. You know, I just wanted to um, talk about, Pastor Eric, when you were mentioned about how you were in your attic because I don't know if you remember this but I was 18 years old and you 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 were coming through the church and we were at Pastor Stephen and Portia and they used to live right behind the church so that was kind of like where you would land after services and Pastor Eric was over there tired laying on the couch and I was and I was like 18 and they were the youth pastors at the time so it was always full of young people young adults and I asked you I said and I didn't know you at the time you know I was young I was just like oh the prophet's in the house but I, but I asked you, I said, how do you prophesy? I don't, you probably don't remember this. And you told me that exact thing. You said, this is what you do. You said, you want to hear the voice of the Lord? Go into your room, read the word, pray, and ask God to speak to you. And write down what he says. And that's what you told me. And you said, don't, don't, don't think about it, just write it down. And I began to do that for about two to three years. I, I just went home because we're talking about pr prophetic. We're talking about it's not just about getting a prophetic word, but it's about becoming a prophetic company of people. And, and you know, because the Bible says that you can desire that, that, that you know, Paul said, I, I would prefer that you prophesy. Like, like we, you can ask God for the gift. You don't have to be a prophet in order to speak what God is speaking. And the earth needs a prophetic company of people in the earth to hear him and release what he's saying. And so we can, you can practice the prophetic. You know what I'm saying? Like just writing down, asking the Lord to speak to you and, and writing down what he says. And, and just the last thing you share this, you said, and this is how you prophesy. If you want to prophesy, you said the first thing is you got to get familiar with his voice. And I remember Pastor Patrick preached the word, I'll never forget, hearing the voice of God is no longer an option. Is no longer an option. And I believe that is relevant for today. It is no longer an option that we as the church hear and know the voice of God. But then you told me, you said, and this is how you prophesy. You said, it's a moment in time. The window's open and you got to jump out. <laughs> That's what you told me. You said, it's like, you said, it's like, you said, it's like standing on a, on, on a branch. You just got to go. <laughs> you said, if you think about it too long, you're going to miss it. <laughs> I, I, I do not recollect. Well, that was like 28 <laughs> years ago. You remember that? I encourage you in that because, you know, we were, we, we're receiving prophetic words. You're receiving prophetic words, and we want them. And, and God is going to do what he, like Pastor Derek said, I've never seen the word of the Lord not happen when you buy in, but also it's about you becoming a prophetic company of people and being able to discern and know what God is speaking in the earth. One of the greatest keys to the prophetic is, and here's the one big key that I've learned, it's called relationship. What the Lord wants from you is a relationship. And he'll talk to you when you're driving the car. And you can hear him clearly. Remember the first night I tried to preach? And he, I came in here, and he started talking to me. See, through relationship with him, 
it's, it's hard to explain because people think I'm crazy, even at my own church. <laughs> they do. I tried to preach last Sunday at my church, and I got there, and the Lord, it's like he comes behind me and says stuff like this. He'll say, I'll, uh, he'll stand, I want you to pray for somebody right now. And I'll do just what he just did, and he'll come back because I didn't do it. He said, I want you to do it now. And through relationship, that little prayer stuff that I mentioned, you pray, you wait, you listen, you pray, you wait, you hear. He said, my Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. That is one of the greatest keys to being a believer. My sheep know my voice. And so I wanted to just open this up a little bit more. Knowing the voice of the Lord is not only just hearing, but it's also seeing. Because when I used to be in prayer, I did a lot of praying. And God would show me things before they would happen. One of the times, I'll just give you this story real quick, and I'll move on to uh, one of the other guys. I was praying in that same room, and the Lord showed me a funeral. I waited. I finished my little 50-cent prayer, I mean 30-cent prayer. And I waited, and the vision of God came inside. And he showed me a funeral. And it was clear. It was just like I went into this place. And I said, I said, whose funeral is that? And he told me. He said, I said, well, who is it? He, he said, well, he told me who it was. And he said, he's going to die in August. It was February when I was in prayer. And I'm in this room. Okay. He said, but you can't tell him. It was my wife's grandfather. And he, he said, you can't tell her. He said, because he's going to die in August. I saw the procession, everything. But that development came out of all those years just praying, waiting, praying, waiting. And then all of a sudden, he begins to unfold. So the word of the Lord is not only uh, audible, it's pictorial. It's visual. That's why we see pictures many times. And you'll hear them say, I see, not just I hear. It's a threefold deal. I see, I hear, I understand, or I sense. Mm. These three things work together. And the end of that story was this. It was August. We were at the church, and somebody called her up and said, your grandfather's sick. He went in the hospital. And it was the second week of August. And it came back to me months later. And we had to go to Atlantic City. <clears throat> we got there on a Saturday. It was a Tuesday night when we got the information. We got there on Saturday morning. A male nurse, a guy was in the room, and he was, the grandfather was uh, laying in the bed, and he came and told us, he said, on Tuesday we lost him. What do you mean you lost him? He said he died on Tuesday. But we were at a prayer meeting praying for family members that Tuesday. By Saturday we got there. He was awake when we got there, and we said, Pop, you know, he was a, actually a, a, one of those people in the de denominational ranks, and he was not really saved. He was a good man, married 50 years. But I said, I can't pray for you to get healed. You need to get saved. He got saved in that hospital room, and two weeks later he died. It was August. That came out of private time in the room. And I emphasize that because a lot of believers today, they don't pray anymore. And listen to the dangerous portion of the prophetic. They don't pray, but they'll wait for prophets to come to give them words. And what you do, if there's false prophets or manipulative prophets, you set yourself up to be manipulated by charlatans. Relationship. Okay. Now, let, I'm going to say something before you. Truth. That's why one of the things the Lord told us when we came here mm -hmm. to Grace, Karis, was to bring health back to prophetic ministry. Because there have been a lot of charlatans and a lot of people taking advantage of right. thus saith the Lord. And it's a power play. I hear God saying. Oh. And, um, and it's like, it's dangerous stuff. It's manipulation. And and talk about, talk about manipulation. Talk about manipulation. <laughs> you, you, do you have something to say about manipulation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but God sent us here to this house to bring health to different areas, to finance, 
and health to ministry, to the five-fold ministry. And I'm so excited as pastor in this house to have vessels. The first vessel is Vessels 2.0 because I'm kind of bringing my friends and family here. They're family. And they're family. You feel family? You feel family here? And it's like we've been grafted. God's grafted us together. And so you have this pastor who, this is what I do. <laughs> this is the other part of what I do. And what's exciting to me is to be able to have these moments, have these times to set this atmosphere because one of the things that God wants to do in this house is raise up a com prophetic company of people. And so I can't wait because I've done what I call prophetic master classes all over. I've 101 through 501. I do one on the spirit of prophecy, which, by the way, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And so when we glorify Jesus, the Holy Spirit, that's his job, right? And so when we start glorifying Jesus and bring the testimony of Jesus, that stirs up the prophetic. That's another thing. You just begin to worship Jesus and put your attention on Jesus then all of a sudden the prophetic begins to stir. And so I'm excited because I just feel like we're ready to move into a moment where there's a company of people who have a prophetic edge. There's something about you in the prophetic, and it might be at different levels, different different releases, different, different ways that God wants to use you. But I'm excited because I'm looking forward to getting a company of people, and we're going to start stirring this up in this house and releasing... And, and, and let me speak this, releasing apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, not just in church, but in business and education and entertainment, Amen. in the medical field, in the military. Can you imagine releasing a, a, a prophetic business person? And you release somebody into government who has an apostolic, governmental, godly yes. anointing, a Joseph, an Esther. And so we got to understand our partnership in this. This is what God's called us to do. So I've had fun, to be honest with you, just witnessing. As you can see, I'm orchestrating. I, wor we, I work with these folk up here, and we're moving and we're flowing, but... I've had fun just getting these couple conferences back to back in order because we're modeling something of where we're going. Because some of you in this room, you'll be doing these things in the future, maybe in churches, but also maybe in different arenas. And so this is the hour where God wants us, as you know, to climb the mountains of society, the pillars and the mind molders in society and bring the kingdom influence, the Isaiah 2, in the last days, the mountains in the earth are going to come to the mountain of the Lord's house and there they're going to say, he's going to teach us of his ways and we're going to walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And so God's raising up something. So I'm kind of excited. I'm just going to give you some disclosure uh, we've had these conferences, and, and, and let me deal with something that Pastor Derek's going to share, and then we're going to move in ministry, so you all can rest now. I want to deal with prophetic disappointment. See, one of the things, I, I did, with all the master classes, I have all this prophetic language, prophetic responsibility. There's so many. I have, I have a glossary of prophetic things that I teach people, and one of them, though, is dealing with disappointment. Here's the two disappointments, the two major disappointments in a conference like this. Because he, he brought it up already. Did you see me? Do you even love me, Jesus? And the thing is, that's why we keep having conferences, because we cannot physically prophesy over every single person in this room personally, although you are personally, if you're in this atmosphere, God is speaking to you. And that's why I keep saying, if he speaks to all, he speaks to one. And if he speaks to one, he speaks to all. And so there's a whole bunch of times where you just got to, you hear a word, and you're like, you know what, that's my word. And just like he had them business people taking it, you got to take it. Oh, yeah. And so physically, because we are all constrained by time and energy, and we all have to sleep, we all have to eat, <laughs> we're constrained by our spirit, are willing, but sometimes our flesh is weak. And not, that's not just a sinful thing, but that's just a reality. We're flesh and blood. 
And so that's why we're going to keep having these. How many wouldn't mind keep having these kind of conferences? Because it is my desire to minister over everybody, and not just over everybody, every, every young person, every child, the Word of the Lord, and be marked by the Word of the Lord personally. But you are getting a personal Word. And so I want to encourage you, if you didn't get a Word this weekend, don't be disappointed. Get something out of it. And we're not done. There's more people who are going to get words in here today. But d disappointment. The other disappointment that people have is they get a word and they're like, well, they didn't say all that I was waiting. I was hoping they'd say this. And, and it's like two things. Understand this. Number one, we all prophesy in part according to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We know in part. We prophesy in part. That's why it's important sometimes to have different prophetic voices because we all have a different perspective. We all have a different voice. We all have a different view. And so we all have parts and not one of us are the whole. And so, and so that's very, very important for us to understand. That's why when I meet with you, I ask you if you have any other prophetic words that were given to you in the past because I want those parts to come to the same table so we can look at because God speaks from the eternal, not in time. So if he spoke to you a word in 1987 or 2007 or in, in 2017 or even this weekend, I like to bring them all together because he speaks from his eternal wisdom in eternity. And so we're putting the parts together and it creates a big picture. Amen? And so sometimes we're like, well, they didn't say everything I wanted them to say. Well, they're not God. And God gives them their part. And so, yes, there's more. And it's maybe if some of those things that God was speaking to you and you're hoping God would say, he's already said it to you because that's what you were waiting for. <laughs> so he's already spoken it to you. And it might not come through a vessel who said, thus saith the Lord, but it came directly into your heart and God already spoke that to you. And so, so that's why we need prophetic wisdom. And that's why we need 2.0 so we can sit down and talk about the word of the Lord that's been spoken. And so I just want to deal with that because that's very important. But I'm excited because here's the other part is that each, we have to celebrate each person that gets a word. It's another unfolding of who we are all supposed to be. And so when my brother or my sister get a word from God, I'm like, yes, because that's not just their word, that's our word. And so we celebrate together in what God is doing together as a house because it's like God just disclosed this not only to them but to all of us of what he's doing in them because what is he doing in them, he's doing in us. Is that okay? You know, one thing I, I mentioned to Pastor Patrick um, that I felt like was extremely unique, um, you know, we've been in um, prophetic meetings like this all over the planet, all over the planet. Uh, you should see what this looks like in China. <laughs> you know, you should see what this looks like in South America, in Africa, you know, in Ethiopia. Uh, it's the same spirit of God moving in the same desire to, in Mindanao, you know, I mean, in some of the strangest corners of this planet. And so we've seen all of those things. And one of the things I mentioned to, to Pastor Patrick was, I feel like God is showing me that there's something special here. There's something special here. And I, I feel like uh, the Holy Spirit really highlighted that there is a rich heritage of the faith movement in this house. Is that right? And for those to come together is quite unique, and I believe it's a first fruit and a, uh, something beautiful in the earth, and I think it's unique in its timing as the enemy tries to bring division and tear things apart. In God's kingdom, he's bringing things together. And I, I believe that even in the, I'm just going to, uh, see, this is, this is how it happens. God starts speaking, and all of a sudden, it starts to, you know, he starts sprinkling something on it. Uh, and, and I and I just I, I hear him. I sense him saying that uh, that th this th this church will be even as a first fruit, yeah. 
uh, in the spirit, and there's a work that's happening uh, in the spirit in this country. That we see the division and we see the separation uh, on the news every single day. We see people um, uh, at each other's throats, and God is showing us that in the kingdom of God, He has another plan. Uh, underneath, he is causing things to come together, bones and sinews and streams that were on the other sides and did not know of each other. And, he's, and, and it, out of those things, something beautiful. Yeah. Out, of that, out of that joining, something unique. Yeah. Amen.